Hello, I'm Victor Aberdeen from ISO and I'm here at the Photographer Academy to talk to you about calibrating an ISO monitor. I've got an ISO Color Edge CG2420 here, which is a hardware calibrated monitor, which means that the electronics inside the monitor control the color. But for you to get that correct, you actually need to run some software so that it can measure the output from your computer and see what it looks like on screen. So here we've got Color Navigator 6 installed on this computer already. And here is Color Navigator. Now, an interesting thing when you start Color Navigator is you'll notice here that there are actually three color targets already installed with Color Navigator. It's interesting because none of them are probably appropriate for the work that you're doing. If you're a web designer and doing everything on the web, then you could use the web design one. Uh, those numbers are quite useful. But if you're, say, a, a wedding photographer and you put a lot of your photographs up online, then actually you need to see how they have been shot in RAW. So I'm going to give you a quick method of doing that, and there's instructions below uh, in the text below the video. And then we'll go through how you create one for yourself. So depending whether you want to be hands-on or just get going. So the quick method is very simple. We click on the advanced and then we select import target. And of course, one I've prepared earlier and, and why not one I prepared earlier? These are what you can download. So you can go and download a Adobe 98 and I'm gonna pick Adobe 98 at 100 candela, that's the brightness level. Uh, and I'm going to open that one and you can see now we've got a new setting in here. Now, we then click the adjust button. If you had uh, a monitor unlike this one that's not self-calibrating, then you need a Spider 5 device, which will allow you to calibrate the screen directly. But this monitor is one of our top of the range. And here, so I clicked the adjust button and then go and pick the built-in one. As you can see, I've got the Spider 5 plugged in. Uh, and I'm gonna run it with the built-in device. Um, don't worry about where it says reference device, then click next and proceed. And while this is running through its calibration process, you can see the probe has dropped down there. I'm gonna explain about the brightness because it's actually very, very important. If I could see you all, I'd say hands up those of you who've never had a print that's too dark. And the reason for that is that the monitor is often too bright. If the monitor's too bright, it overexposes your brain and you end up with a dark print. So if you reduce the brightness of the monitor, the level of illumination coming through the picture is correct to the brightness. How do you work it out? It's actually a lot simpler than it sounds. Take a reference print that you've got. You can get them from Loxley and other places. Hold the reference print where you'd normally look at it next to where that print is on the monitor. And then you can see <coughs> between the two whether they're the same brightness or not. Don't measure them. There's no measurement that is important here apart from how you see them with your eyes. And it's as simple as that. Where you look at your print and where your monitor is, the two together, those brightnesses should be about the same. Don't stress about it, get it just nice and okay. Good. So now the monitor's running through the calibration process. You can see the probe device is sitting there, and, and this is obviously not ideal conditions for it with all the light in the room, but with this device you can set a schedule to calibrate at night when it's completely dark. So progress bar running here, and the whole process beginning to end with the monitor on and running um, shouldn't be much more than five minutes. Um, and if you automate it, it can do it at night. It turns the monitor on, everything gets warmed up nicely, it does its calibration and it goes back to sleep. Uh, and it doesn't even need the computer on or connected. It'll do it all on its own, based on the measurements you've done the first time you calibrated it with your computer. We'll just leave it here now, running through the process. And when that's completed, you can see the completed calibration, and then we'll go and create one from scratch. Okay, so here we've got the results now back from that calibration. Um, and there's something very important I'm going to go through here about the difference between this type of calibration to a target than making a profile. 
So what we've got here is the brightness level, 100 candela, and you can see we actually measured 100.2 candela on this particular model. And that is also measured internally inside the monitor by the hardware. Um, black level here, we set it to minimum, and we've ended up with a very good black number here of 0 0.07 candela. And an average ISO uh, before this range came out would probably give you 0.14 to 0.2 perfectly acceptable for photography and for printing. You don't need a new one because that's got 0.07. But if you like the really deep black colours, then that's a good thing to go for. Next is the contrast ratio here is 1350 to 1. And then we've got the white point and we asked for 6500, which is the default white point for Adobe RGB. And we've got 6505, very close. 2.2 there for the gamma curve, and then down here, and this is where the important bit between a profile and a target comes in, we've got the gamma here. We were looking for 6,400, and we got 6,403, and 3,300 dead on. Now, the difference between doing a profile and a target is we assign those numbers, so you won't get colour outside of the colour space that you're specifying. So the monitor is in control of the colour set by the software in the computer. That's it, done. Click finish, all complete. Now, let's say you want to do something different or you want to create your own one. There's a button here, create a new target. And if we click on this button, it loads a screen with four options on it. Enter manually, that means you choose the numbers. Measure a target. This is for somebody who's doing a lot of print work and maybe has a, a particular color space they want to, to address. We're not gonna do that one. Load a profile, that's using an ICC profile from another device. So for example, if you want to match the monitor to a printer, not ideal for a photographer. A photographer should really use the space used by the camera. That's one that would be used by a printer. And then use an existing target, so take one that you've already calibrated for the monitor and modify that one. We're going to do enter manually, so we're going to run through the whole process so you know what each step does. Click next. <clears throat> we now get uh, a new menu that says monitor native on a pull-down menu. What it means by monitor native is the color that the monitor can deliver. The monitor can deliver more color than Adobe RGB, but it might not be quite the right way you want it. Um, some people like that, it's personal preference, but I'm gonna go down and pick Adobe RGB because that's what camera raw is. Raw data coming in from the camera, all the cameras at the moment shooting raw files are shooting Adobe RGB, so we'll pick Adobe RGB and you see it will give us a gamut triangle. If we'd picked sRGB, that would be smaller. Uh, and let me do that for you, so you can have a quick look down here, right down the bottom of my list. Yes, I have too many of these. They're sRGB, and you can see that's much smaller. If you're shooting video, you'd shoot something very similar to sRGB. So, <coughs> there we've got Adobe RGB. We don't need gamut clipping because the monitor covers the full Adobe color space. Go to the next one. We mentioned brightness earlier, and here you've got the brightness slider, and you can go from 60 candela through to 120. Don't extend the brightness range because that damages the uniformity. It stops the evenness of the screen, which is a very important factor, and one of the reasons you should have bought this monitor. So let's set this one again to the same value I just calibrated at. Um, at 100 candela. The next one is the color temperature, and we've got this set to 6,500 degrees Kelvin. If you were going to be working completely in film photography, you might want to set it to 5,500, which was daylight white in my old age when we shot with transparency film. And D50, which is the next one on the list down here, which is what standard print production is. So if you're producing a book, it's D50. It's much better to let the software manage that so you see what comes in from the camera correctly. Right, next one, adjust the minimum black level. 
I really can't see a reason for you to do that. There are people who need to. Just leave it as it is. Don't change it. You can always play, but remember you have. <laughs> Next one is the gamma curve. In photography, 2.2 is the norm. If you get into video or printing, then those differences uh, come in. So printing can be 1.8. Video can be 2.4 or 2.6. But right now, let's stay on there. Gray balance, standard and contrast. Well, this particular monitor will only do contrast, the CG2420. If you had uh, one of the other CG models, say it's CG247, um, that monitor would do standard or grey, and that measures the tonal range through. If we were to measure this monitor with this spider, then we could do standard or grey balance, and you'll see the tones going through uh, as it measures the tone curve. With contrast, we set the standard ones as set in the factory, and all these monitors are calibrated before they reach you. Let's go next, and then we'll... So we've got the, the values here, 100 candela, 6,500, 2.2, and I'll change the uh, emulation for TPA, for the Photographer Academy. And let's click Finish. And then we go next, but this time I'm going to do it with the spider. And now it's saying, with the spider here, you have to take the cover off, like so. And then in order to get the spider to hang correctly on it, we need to lift, we need to plug it in, lift the hood, and sp slide the spider into place. And we can do that like that. We then click next, and you line that up over the top of that marker there, making sure that it is flat against the screen. Lots of people think it matters how tight it is against the screen. It's a big piece of glass. The best environment for calibration is as near darkness as you can, and we're not in an ideal place. Simple rule, if you can see your shadow from your hand on the glass, it's not ideal. But let's do it, because we're here to show you not to do a perfect calibration. And so now you can see with the Spider 5 in place, um, and you could do this with the X-Rite device, it's going to run through the colours and the tones for you, just as we saw earlier with the internal device running. So we'll just let it go through the process here uh, of doing the calibration, and then when it's finished that process, we'll come back and show you the results of that calibration and a couple of other little things in Colour Navigator and with your new ISO, you'll be ready to rock and roll and have some perfect pictures being produced. See you in a moment. OK, so here we can see the results. And again, we got 100 candela, and we got a, a good contrast there, and 6496 is the white point. And again, you can see the adjustments on the gamut there. So that's finished with the spider. All good. And so now we have over here on the right-hand side, we've got two different calibration settings. The one with the black dot is the accurate one. The two with the cyan dots say they're calibrated and loaded in the monitor. And the little white cross just means that this monitor will self-calibrate with it. Um, very quickly, a couple of other really quick, useful things for you. Um, there is a nice little test pattern you can bring up which just gives you a good grey scale across the scan, which is always good to test neutral. Another thing, if you've got one of the self-calibrating monitors, is to click the self-calibration settings, check enable self-calibration, and then you could have it to run every 200 hours on usage time, uh, or maybe you know you want to do it weekly or monthly, but you could do it. So on the first Sunday of every month, um, at Let's go for 3 o'clock in the morning when it's going to be dark. Um, and you could calibrate the standard factory settings or not. That's your choice. So we click OK, and that's set already. All done. One last thing in here, under the versions, you can go into here on the version settings, and you can click here and go and check 
on the ISO website to see if there are any updates to the software, uh, which is a good idea if your software has been updated in the operating system, so Windows or Mac OS X, for example. Um, we might have had to make changes for changes that have been made in the operating system. So it's a good idea to keep that checked. So we're complete now. The monitor is set up in the Adobe RGB color space. True to creativity. Enjoy taking fantastic photos. Thank you.